Happy Friday, television family. We made it to the weekend. Well, almost. <clears throat> Not quite there yet. 26th day of April 2024. I am Dan Koontz. Happy Apple Blossom. It's underway. Five star show. It's Friday. We give you the five star show or double your television viewing pleasure back. Uh, pretty cool, pretty rainy yesterday. Didn't put any damper on Chief for today or all the festivities uh, at Memorial Park. Everything went off without a hitch. Uh, Today is day two. Tomorrow is the Technoplex Youth Parade. Of course, we'll be covering that for you here on the NCW Life Channel. Fantastic Show's Carnival kicks off uh, at the Wenatchee Valley Mall parking lot. Um, later on today, we're in full apple blossom mode. Around here, we'll have that complete weather forecast. A little cool, a little unsettled. Nothing. Uh, we're not going to get any rain, it doesn't look like, at least tomorrow. Could still get a little bit of rain today. The clouds are already starting to thin out. But that cool wet air came in yesterday. We had just almost a tenth of an inch of rain as officially measured up a Pangborn Memorial Airport. That's where they measure these things. You have to put it somewhere and they put it at the Pangborn. So well, it is what it is. Forecast details are coming up. I know it's important to know what the weather is going to be like this weekend. We'll have that for you and the news and sports. Remember last year, the Mariners didn't win a single game in Arlington against Texas, while the Rangers, of course, went on to win the world championship. Well, they won two of three in Arlington, including yesterday afternoon. We'll have highlights of that and all the prep action, all the scores, and everything that's going to be taking place this weekend. Mike McNaughty has got an opinion. We've got two interviews in the back half of the program. Uh, Jefferson Robbins had a chance to visit the organizers of the uh, Dia del Nino Community Health Festival. It is Sunday at Methow Park in South Wenatchee, just down the road from us. It's an official Apple Blossom event. And even though the Wazoo Master Gardener's plant sale is not an official Apple Blossom event, it's going on tomorrow anyway. A lot of things going on this weekend. We'll uh, visit once more with Connie Memel from the Washington State University Master Gardeners. Their plant sale is tomorrow. It's a big one at the Pibus Public Market. Let's do our tour around the valley, or our tours, if you will. Our cameras are going to be looking pretty cool today. That's the camera on the Wenatchee Heights. That's the Lower East camera is what we call it. Uh, it's kind of closer to the Stamilt area than it is to the Wenatchee Valley, a little bit lower, but still a nice view there. Sunrise this morning was a 5.51, sunset tonight will be 8.06. That's 14 hours and 15 minutes of daylight. We only hit 53 yesterday. It didn't warm up much at all, and we had the light rain for most of the afternoon. Our normal high is 65. It was a cool Thursday. We're not going to get to 65 today or tomorrow for that matter. In fact, uh, we'll be below normal really right into the middle part of next week. But we're looking at fairly sunny conditions. Again, those details are coming up. Let's uh, head on up to Bear Mountain, say good morning to Lake Chelan. From high atop Bear Mountain, that is pointing to the north up towards the Holden Village and Stahican. Look at that, that's a beautiful view there. And look how green the hills are on the south shore of Lake Chelan. That is just a gorgeous view. That's high atop Bear Mountain which is uh, overlooks, of course, the Bear Mountain Golf Course on the South Shore. Gorgeous view there. I think you can even make out the State Park if you squint anyway. Billy Goat looks like we're flying in an airplane. Look at that. Of course, that camera is about as high as any camera we have in the Sky Fi system. It's over a mile in elevation. High atop Billy Goat Mountain overlooking the Alta Lake area. You can't see anything except the clouds. And maybe that sun will burn off those clouds as the day progresses. Of course, the sun is now higher in the sky. The days are longer. We'll see if those clouds burn off up in the Omac Okanagan area. Right now in Omac, it's 48, which is what we have here in downtown Wenatchee. And one more view of Lake Chelan from McNeil Canyon. You can make out the lake just barely over the ridge there. Beautiful view there. And look how green the hill, hills and the mountains are. It's just beautiful this time of the year, unless you have allergies. And a lot of people have been suffering from allergies. I didn't really have much of an allergy season this year, knock on wood. Hopefully that'll keep up. All right, from the National Weather Service, here it is, that all-important forecast for the first weekend of the Washington State Apple Blossom Festival, number 105. What are we looking at today? Partly cloudy, slight chance of rain. If we get any, it'll be in the afternoon. And that high of 63 is below normal, 44 for the overnight low tonight under partly cloudy skies. Partly sunny Saturday, cooler still, only 62 because our overnight low is going to be chilly at 44 degrees. When the Teneplex Youth Parade uh, starts at the top there at Triangle Park at 11 a.m., it's going to be cool. It will be in the mid-50s by the time the parade starts, so heads up on that. You want to be uh, prepared to be outside in fairly cool weather 
on Saturday. Saturday night, overnight low, chilly again, 42 for the overnight low, also a little breezy at times on Saturday night. We wrap up the weekend with a very nice uh, day. Sunshine for the most part uh, and a high of about 61 degrees. We head into Monday with a big cool down. It's also going to be rather breezy on Monday with a high of 59, but we're going to have quite a bit of sunshine. Sunshine Tuesday, 62. Sunshine Wednesday, 68. Again, our normal high is 65. By the time we get to the early part of next week, our normal high will be 66, so it's going to be below normal right through until we get to Wednesday of next week, but it looks like we're going to be fairly dry for the balance of the forecast. All right, we are going to take a break, and when we come back in two minutes, so you have time to grab your cup of coffee and come right back and join me, we'll do the news. You're watching Wake Up in Anchee Valley, Friday edition on the NCW Life channel. A ductless unit from Carrier can keep anyone comfortable. Take Shelly, for instance. She finds me time in her new attic turned home gym. And with her Carrier ductless unit, the temperature is always perfect, no matter how intense her workout gets. Carrier, total comfort, totally happy. Turn to the experts, Carrier and Alpine Air. Heat and air, call Alpine Air. Happy Apple Blossom from NCW Life Channel, your local TV station. While you're enjoying our Apple Blossom coverage on NCW Life, we need to thank our platinum supporter, Alpine Air Heating and Cooling. Turn to the experts, Carrier and Alpine Air Heat and Air. Call Alpine Air. Have a great Apple Blossom, and thanks for watching your local TV station, the NCW Life Channel. Hey there folks, Blueberry Carrie here to invite you on out to Blueberry Hills to experience some real treats. Take a look at our homemade cream pies, our amazing cheesecakes, and don't forget our famous banana pudding. Remember, we're more than just great treats. People come from all over the world to experience what has been called one of the best destination restaurants in the Pacific Northwest. So come on out and see what all the fuss is about. Blueberry Hills in Manson, it's where the world is coming to. Let nothing stand between you and the tree stand with this great offer on the fast, durable Kubota Sidekick. Featuring a gas-powered engine that delivers a top speed of 40 miles per hour, outstanding acceleration and handling with cargo, and a two-year, 1,000-hour warranty. Get the Sidekick now for zero down, 0% zero APR for 36 months or save $1,000. degrees right now the clouds have the upper hand we'll see some sun breaks but the possibility of some light rain lower 60s today quite a bit of sunshine lower 60s on Saturday our temperatures will be below normal for the foreseeable future but we're gonna have more sun than clouds it's eight minutes after the hour and it looks like the reintroduction of grizzly bears to the North Cascades is pretty much a, a done deal the National Park Service and the US Fish and Wildlife Service announcing yesterday their intent to bring grizzly bears back to the mountains where they once roamed. The decision ends a scoping and public comment process that was begun by the Biden administration in 2022. The Trump administration withdrew a similar proposal in 2020, citing opposition from local landowners. The wildlife agencies say the bears would be restored by transporting them from other ecosystems in the Rocky Mountains and British Columbia. They'll seek to move three to seven grizzly bears a year over a five to 10 year period to reach an initial population of 25 grizzlies. There is no set timeline for when that translocation process begins. The last confirmed sighting of a grizzly bear in the U.S. portion of the North Cascades was in 1996. Wenatchee Valley College has banned a Wenatchee woman from campus after she allegedly assaulted a couple of students earlier in the week. Wenatchee police say the students, a man and a woman, they were sitting in the courtyard of the college campus on Monday morning when the 22-year-old suspect, who is not a student, approached and threatened to attack the female. The male victim intervened. Police say the suspect struck him in the face and bit him during the struggle. Court records show the suspect lives with schizophrenia and has previously been arrested for alleged assaults on family members and on police. She is now charged in Chelan County District Court with fourth degree assault in this latest incident. 
Every year, the Washington State Apple Blossom Festival begins their festivities on Thursday at noon with Chief for a day, the celebration honors children who are disabled or chronically ill. They partner up the kids with local law enforcement agencies. Not even the rain could stop the excitement from the crowd that was filled with the friends and loved ones and classmates of the Chiefs for a day. Wenatchee Police Chief Steve Crown introduced Sabrina Sanchez Escalara as his last little chief. Of course, Chief Crown is retiring. He told the crowd he needed to get a little more familiar with the YouTube character Blippi to match her love. For Blippi earlier this week, we spoke with Chief Crown to hear what makes this event important to him as he gets ready to retire. There's always a surprise in there somewhere, and I find that to be kind of kind of fun. Is just the the surprise, you know. Uh, there's always been uh, one of those kids that will want to tell a joke, and sometimes they're pretty funny, and just the spontaneity of it all. I enjoy that. It's just the the sheer joy that you see on the kids' face. That's what I, lo I love about it. It's a, a really cool um, full day of uh, celebrating uh, the life of these children. And um, they get to, well in advance of, of the day of the celebration, they're being fitted for a uniform just like mine and all the stars and the uh, patches, it, it looks almost identical to what I have. It's really kind of a big deal for the whole community. And what we enjoy about it in law enforcement and uh, uh, first responders is it's the kickoff of Apple Blossom. Thursday of every, every year is the Apple Blossom kickoff. So um, after the oath of office and the full uh, celebration up on stage, the kids get to go out to the static display, which is usually our um, boats and ATVs and, and things like that that law enforcement use in, the, in uh, their line of work. And when they're done kind of playing around with the horses and, and ATVs, they go over to the library and they're able to uh, uh, have some refreshments and things like that and uh, then they're able to participate in the, the uh, youth parade and, and a couple other events so it's, it's, a, it's a big deal for the kids and sometimes it's, it's exhausting for the kids but uh, the parents just enjoy it. Uh, it's one day they get to forget about whatever woes they may have for health and and uh, whatever uh, difficulties they've been suffering with a kid, um, they just get to put that aside and it's celebrating uh, with their children and, and having a great time and, and the memories that they're creating in that moment. I think putting a little bit of the, the job on pause is always a great thing. Uh, I think giving back to the community is, is definitely a win-win. A um, this like many of the events that I'm experiencing this year are my lasts. You know, you do, do a lot of different things throughout the, the year. I feel honored to be able to do what I do and what I've done. Um, so overall, I just really appreciate um, everything that I've been given and what this line of work has uh, given me and uh, what I've I've been able to give back. So in the end, um, I think it's, a, it's been a great career and I've really appreciated everything I've been able to do. The Misawa Sister City Association has extended the deadline for those of you who might want to go visit our sister cities in Japan come this autumn. Selected delegates will travel to Japan from September 27th to October 6th to promote cultural exchange and awareness with Wenatchee's sister city. The group will spend five to six days in Misawa and a couple of days in Tokyo. All the time you'll stay with Japanese host families if you're interested and you're an adult or a student grades seven through 12th. You have to be a current member of the Wenatchee Valley Misawa Sisters Association. The cost of the trip about 2,500 bucks per person. Applications will now be accepted through May 1st on the association's website. And it's apple blossom time and that means parades. So in case you're not familiar, here are the roots. 
And the times for the Apple Blossom Festival Stimo Growers Grand Parade and the Teneplex Youth Parade. Of course, the Teneplex Youth Parade is tomorrow morning. Begins at 11 a.m. It'll start at Triangle Park. It'll go down to Rondo. It'll turn left on Mission. It'll end at the intersection of Mission and Fifth Street. The Stimo Growers Grand Parade next Saturday, May 4th. It also begins at 11 a.m. Heads down from Triangle Park. Goes all the way down to Rondo Avenue. All the way down to Wenatchee Avenue. It heads north. And then it wraps up at the intersection of Wenatchee Avenue and 7th Street. Link transit routes as a matter as uh, as always will be affected so you know for all that information you can just go to links website <clears throat> to find out how your bus may be affected by the parades tomorrow and one week from tomorrow and that's the news a quarter after the hour one more newscast before we get to do a weekend but we don't really have a weekend around here we got the parade to do tomorrow yes <laughs> there it is uh, we got it tomorrow, the Tenepex Youth Parade with uh, Eric Granstrom and Julie Agens Kuntz. Uh, the parade starts at 11 a.m. Our coverage begins at 11 a.m. They'll be coming by where we're going to be setting up our cameras uh, and our equipment right around a oh, quarter after 11 or so. So if you can't make it out to the Tenepex Youth Parade along the route, you can watch it right here in high definition stereo and monophonic sound beginning at 11 a.m. And if you have a news tip, get a hold of us. Send us an email, news at ncwlife.com. When we come back, sports, good day for the Mariners and the Seahawks. Got a pretty good lineman, we're told. Sports is next. You're watching Wake Up in Anchee Valley on the NCW Life channel. My name is Anna Marie. I've lived at Prestige here for six and a half years, and I love it. They just made you feel so welcome. I love my room. I get three meals a day, do as I darn well want to. I've loved it ever since I moved in. Mom's a wonderful, wonderful lady. She deserved the very best, and I got it for her here at Prestige. So you may have heard the latest trend, shrinkflation. Companies are making products smaller and decreasing the quality of their ingredients. Well, at Abby's, we're going the opposite direction. We're sticking with the same plan that's worked since 1964. For a real value, head to Abby's. This is Skinny, and he helped found Abby's 60 years ago. In honor of Skinny, we're putting his favorite pizza on sale. Savory pizza sauce, Canadian bacon piled to the edge, and juicy tomatoes make this a very special pizza. Order your Skinny special right now at abbys.com. It's a great time to go into the medical profession. And this is the perfect place to start because this is going to provide you that basic understanding in order to get into medical school, physical therapy school. So when you are ready to head on your career pathway, wherever it is, then you've already had some experience and say, oh, it's so cool. This is exactly what I want to do. So really, you're going to leave me with 13 college credits and a license with the state of Washington. The Lake Chelan Chamber of Commerce presents the magic of Manson. Spring is here at the Chelan Ridge Winery. Check out the all new deck area, enjoy an amazing view, new vintage wines, and that down home hospitality Chelan Ridge is famous for. Wine Girl Wines is already famous for wine, beer, and great entertainment. And now they have added craft cocktails to the list of food and drink. So pop on by our Manson location for some good old fashioned fun. Nineteen minutes after the hour, the Seattle Mariners regained first place in the AL West and they won their three-game series against the Rangers. They held off Texas 4-3 yesterday afternoon in Arlington. Ty France and Luis Urias provided all the offense for the Mariners. Ty goes the other way. It's a slicing drive. It's deep. It's deep. It's gone! Ty France with that great plate coverage. Muscles one out the opposite way. His first homer of the season. And a 2 nothing lead for the Mariners here in the first. Kept that baby fair. Didn't have any slice on No. Him. Put a good swing on it all the way. And that was Haney trying to go to the top of the zone again. Didn't quite get it there. And Ty makes him pay for it. He had an ERA just under five. The ball hit well. Out to right field. Hanniger is back. He looks up. It is gone! Into the Rangers' bullpen. Low strikes for his first home run of the year and gets the Rangers on the board early. No better feeling than to be able to answer back as that Ranger offense is starting to wake up. Nathaniel Lowe just hammers his slider down and in. That one hit well. Deep out to right and gone! 
Josh Smith with a solo shot to tie the game. That's his first of the year. That's what you've said, yeah. AT &T. Hey, look at this. Big drive, left field. Giddy up, baby. Gone! Home run for Luis Arias. Two-run shot. The Mariners have a 4-2 lead. That's his second home run. RBI six and seven. Getting good play out of the third base platoon, folks. I might have had a shot. 2-2. Two -two. And that one out to the alley in left field. And it gets down base hit. One run is in. They'll stop Heim at third. RBI single by Marcus Simeon. And the Rangers pulled it within a run. Ground ball. Urias charging, throwing. Got him! The Mariners will play their fifth National League team already this season. When they visit Arizona tonight, the Mariners have played 12 interleague games. That's the most in the majors uh, so far this year. Well, what many experts consider to be the, oh, I'm sorry, the American League West. I got to do this, folks. Of course, the Mariners now have a half game lead over Texas and a three game lead over the Angels. The Cubs beat the Astros yesterday and the A's beat my Yankees. Well, what do you do about that? All right, let's talk about football, shall we? A lot of experts consider this guy the best defensive lineman in the draft, and by golly, we got him. Byron Murphy from Texas landed right in the Seahawks' lap last night. Seattle made him their first round draft pick, 16th pick overall. With the 16th pick in the 2024 NFL Draft, the Seattle Seahawks select Byron Murphy, defensive tackle, Texas. Hey, is this Byron? Yes, sir. Byron, this is John Schneider with the Seattle Seahawks. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. Good, man. Hey, we don't care what your agent says about you, man. We think you're a hell of a football player. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to select you right here, okay, buddy? Yes, sir. Okay, man. Come, on, be, come be a Seahawk, man. Hey, he, here's our head coach. Here's our, here's our head coach, Mike McDonald, okay? Yes, sir. Oh, congratulations. Can't wait to see you, bud. I can't wait to talk. Can't wait to see you, too, Kyle. Byron. Yes, sir. Hey, man. Congratulations, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Get over Byron, Don't man. Worry. The place is going Thanks. crazy, brother. <laughs> Now, unless the Seahawks swing some sort of deal, they do not have a second-round pick. They're not scheduled to pick again. Scheduled, anyway, until the third round, the 81st overall pick. All right, to the prep scoreboard we go. We'll start with soccer. One note <clears throat> on Cascade, who finishes up their regular season 14-0-1. And, and the Cascade Kodiak boys soccer team, they beat OMAC, as you see there, 5-0. They have outscored their opponents this year 64-6. That's unheard of. And there's the rest of the winners in the Prep Boys soccer action yesterday. There's soccer today. Not a big schedule because, uh, well, for one thing, the Wenatchee Panthers are off. Uh, Moses Lake will be at Davis. They'll get going at 5 o'clock, and Eastmont will travel down to Sunnyside on the pitch at 7 o'clock. That's today. Tomorrow, it looks something like this. 11 a.m. start for Pateras and Okanagan. Brewster welcomes Liberty Bell and Oroville. We'll be welcoming Tenasca. LaSalle travels to Kashmir at 1, and then a night game tomorrow night at Boys Soccer. Manson welcomes Bridgeport to town. Baseball scores from yesterday. Omax swept a doubleheader for Manson. They won the opener 6-5, won the nightcap 12-5. The Afraid of JV split with Waterville-Mansfield. They won the first game. Waterville-Mansfield won the second game. Bridgeport does not have a baseball team this year, so Okanagan wins by default, and it was raining too hard up at Liberty Bell in the Medhow Valley for them to get a baseball game in. Baseball games today. Doubleheaders across the board. Brewster's at Lake Roosevelt, West Valley at Eastmont, and Wenatchee travels to Moses Lake. The big schools will get going at 4 o'clock. Lake Roosevelt will host Brewster at 3 and prep baseball on Saturday. Doubleheaders across the board with the exception 
of one game, which isn't listed there, so what do you care, right? 10 a.m. start for Liberty Bell and Tenasket, and then there's the rest of the schedule right on down the line for prep baseball tomorrow. And we can't forget about fast pitch softball. Scoreboard from yesterday, routes all across the board. Cashmere, Okanagan, and Liberty Bell, they all won, and they all won big prep fast pitch action today. Double headers for everybody except Waterville, Mansfield, and Cashmere. That's a single game. Everything else is a double header, including East Mount West Valley and Moses Lake travels to Wenatchee to take on the Panthers at Walla Walla Point Park. And then tomorrow, again, double headers for everybody with an early start for Tenasket and Liberty Bell. And those are just some of the games that people are playing at 25 minutes after the hour. Happy National Help a Horse Day today. <clears throat> with all due apologies to the dog. The horse is really man's best friend. I mean, the horse was critical to the development of mankind, and yet there are still people out there who treat horses like crap. There are about 10,000 horses, they think, housed by various rescue organizations across the U.S. because they were not treated well or have not been treated well. Horses are awesome animals. They have tremendous hearing there because their ears can go 180 degrees, so their hearing is phenomenal. They can see almost entirely around their eyes are on the side of the head and they can move into individually. They just can't see directly in front of them. That's pretty remarkable. Horses, as you probably know, cannot breathe through their mouth. They have to breathe through their nose. And I didn't know this and that I had horses. Horses only sleep about two and a half hours a day. They rest a lot, but they don't sleep that much. Help a horse today. Well, yeah, there's a number of organizations in our area that do exactly that. Take care of horses who have been abused or mistreated. 26 minutes after the era. Today in history, well, <clears throat> 12 days on the run, they got him. John Wilkes Booth is tracked down and killed by Union Cavalry soldiers uh, just across the Rappahannock River in Virginia. He was holed up at uh, Richard Garrett's farm. Uh, Richard Garrett and his family had no idea that Lincoln had been assassinated in 12 days earlier. News traveled slow there. Uh, Booth was introduced uh, to Mr. Garrett and his traveling companions as Jim Boyd, a Confederate soldier who had been wounded in the Battle of Petersburg and was heading home. Then he realized something else was gone, going on. Richard Garrett did when a bunch of cavalry guys showed up at his barn. John Wilkes Booth met his end on this date uh, in 1865. Lou Gehrig retired with 493 career home runs and 1,995 RBIs. In 1931, he hit 46 home runs. He drove in a record 185 RBIs, but he should have had 47 home runs and 187 RBIs. On this date at Griffith Park in Washington, D.C., in the second inning, the Yankees' leadoff hitter walked. And then Lou Gehrig hit a home run that was hit so hard, it went out so fast, it hit the nippy bleachers and bounced back onto the field when it was caught by the center fielder. But it was a home run. I mean, he just crushed the ball. But the runner on first base looked up and he saw the center fielder with the baseball and thought the center fielder caught it. And he jogged off the diamond into the Yankee dugout. Lou Gehrig was running around the bases after the home run. He didn't look up. And since Lou Gehrig passed the runner in front of him, he's out. He lost the home run. The Yankees lost the game by two runs. He lost the home run and two RBIs. He ended up tying Babe Ruth for the home run lead in 1931 with 46 home runs. He actually hit 47, but it didn't count. Happened on the state 93 years ago in 1931. 62 years ago today, for the first time in American history, we landed a spacecraft on the moon. A spacecraft landed on the moon, first time ever in American history, 62 years ago today. And by landing, I mean it crashed. The Ranger 4 crashed on the moon. It wasn't supposed to crash on the moon. They were supposed to bring back a bunch of data. It crashed. It didn't work. Well, we tried again. And Chernobyl, 38 years ago today. Chernobyl. Uh, word got out in Sweden. There was a nuclear power plant in Sweden, which is about 620 miles from Chernobyl, which is in the Ukraine. And at the Swedish uh, nuclear power plant, they started getting these incredibly high readings of bad crap in the air. And so the folks in Sweden looked around their power plant, we're okay. They took a look at all the data and said, this is coming from the Soviet Union. So the Swedes called up the Soviets, said, everything okay down there? And Soviets, no problem, no problem at all. And then they said, well, we're pretty sure that you guys had an accident, we're gonna tell the world. And the Soviets said, okay, we had a little bitty accident. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, nothing.
And then they started evacuating about 100,000 people, and even though the Soviet Union was a secretive society, when you start evacuating 100,000 people, word is going to get out. Here's a contemporary news account from this date in 1985. It does now seem likely that sometime in the last couple of days there's been perhaps the worst accident in the short history of the world's nuclear power industry. The Russians may have been hoping they could contain it without having to release the news, as they appear to have tried to do so in an earlier accident in the Urals 19 years ago. But the fact that they've had to reveal it and admit that there are casualties suggests they're deeply worried about the scale of it. Well, it was just four hours ago when Soviet viewers were watching their evening news bulletin and the announcer revealed that the accident had taken place. The official news agency TASS later added that aid was being given to those affected. There has been a nuclear accident in the Soviet Union and the Soviets have admitted that it happened. The Soviet version is this. One of the atomic reactors at the Chernobyl atomic power plant near the city of Kiev was damaged and there is speculation in Moscow that people were injured and may have died. The Soviets may have been fairly quick to acknowledge the accident because evidence in the form of mild nuclear radiation had already reached beyond the Soviet borders to Scandinavia. How many people died from, they don't know, anywhere from 4,000 to 16,000 to even more than that. There are people still ill today from what happened on this date in 1986. By the way, the cleanup continues. It'll be done in the year 2065. Birthdays, Eddie Egan, he has one unique claim to fame, but it's pretty unique. He is the only person ever to win a gold medal at the Winter Olympics and the Summer Olympics in two different sports. He won the gold medal in boxing at the 1920 Antwerp Games, and he won the gold medal in bobsled at the 1932 Lake Placid Games. A remarkable achievement, Eddie Egan was born in the state in 1897, and happy birthday to Carol Burnett, the television legend. She is 91 years old today. Special thanks to our platinum sponsor, Alpine Air. For heat and air, call Alpine Air. Special thanks to our friends at Pool and Spa Services on Worthen Street in Wenatchee by Pibus. They're celebrating the special anniversary this year. And special thanks to our super duper sponsor, Prestige Senior Living at Colonial Vista in both their main campus in Wenatchee and their campus in East Wenatchee. All right, gonna take a break. And when we come back, a couple of interviews you don't wanna miss. You're watching a Friday edition of Wake Up Wenatchee Valley on the NCW Life Channel. Happy Apple Blossom from NCW Life Channel, your local TV station. While you're enjoying our Apple Blossom coverage on NCW Life, we need to thank our gold supporter, Town Auto Group. Your community, your family, your Town Auto Group. Have a great Apple Blossom and thanks for watching your local TV station, the NCW Life Channel. Global Car Care has the best customer service in the Valley. From the moment you walk in the door, their goal is to help you stay on the road. So you can keep doing what's important to you. Global Car Care certified ASE mechanics stand behind your automotive repairs. Mike Mad Dog McNaughty and everybody is entitled to my opinion. Now, regarding their success in earning money, I have heard people say that I've worked hard for what I have and I deserve my financial success. Well, I do commend such folks and I'm a believer in hard work, but let's be honest. A major factor in our financial success in this society is that we exist in a very blessed economic system. If it was hard work alone that guaranteed financial success, the richest people in the world would very likely be women in sub-Saharan Africa or some other such place. Now, let's admit it. Hard work may be a contributing factor in making a lot of money, but it is certainly not a universal guarantee that because I worked hard, I deserve to have more money than someone else. This is Mike Mad Dog Magnati, and that's my opinion. Look at this. 
This would look really good in the kitchen. Or, or the living room. Just look at it. New windows are a work of art. Upgrade your home's windows and get cash back from Chelan County PUD. This is going to look great in the house. The Lake Chelan Chamber of Commerce presents Wonders of Wooden Avenue. Culinary Apple is North Central Washington's premier kitchen store with everything you need to elevate your own culinary experience. For the most unique wine tasting experience in the Chelan Valley, visit One Wines. Popular for being the smallest and most intimate facility in the valley, it features one red, one white, and one rosé. Complex wines, simple elegance. Wonders of Wooden Avenue, North Central Washington's premier shopping district. Highlander Golf Course and Grill, located in East Wenatchee, offers terrific views and challenging play for golfers at every skill level. From the golf course to the grill, you don't need to be a member to dine in style and play golf too. Highlander's well-groomed fairways and greens keep it difficult, yet friendly for your regular rounds of golf or a new destination for you and your out-of-town friends. Contact the Highlander Pro Shop today to schedule your tee time, outing, or tournament. Open seven days a week, where everyone is welcome to play and eat. It's a beautiful park and it's a great place to have a celebration. Can you tell me a little bit about the Dia del Niños Festival? And it's been going on for a couple of years, but what can people expect when they show up, Doctor? Yeah, so this is our third annual uh, health fair uh, and we are doing it to celebrate health and wellness in our community and to offer additional information and screening to uh, our Latino community, especially surrounding uh, areas of health disparities. So Doctor, one of the things you deal with a lot is equity in health yes. and this is a persistence of problems in certain segments of the community mm -hmm. that are more easily addressed in the broader community. So a health fair like this, how does that help you address health inequities? Well, we know in our community uh, that there are some health disparities affecting some groups other, more than others. So with this health fair, we are want to give additional information and screenings to the Latino community surrounding certain uh, uh, health disparities. Uh, health disparities are when there is an unequal amount of disease or unequal opportunities to achieve optimal health. Um, one of those areas is diabetes. Uh, we know that there is a greater occurrence of diabetes for Latino, Black, Asian, and American Indian populations. We also know that in our community, there is less control of diabetes for these groups as well. Um, so we want to offer the ability to screen for diabetes. Um, so if you are in one of those groups or if you have a direct family member who has diabetes, your risk of diabetes is much greater. Uh, so we'll offer the opportunity to screen for diabetes and give information on what to do if you have diabetes or prediabetes. We're also going to offer the opportunity to screen for high blood pressure and give information on what to do if you have high blood pressure. Um, we're going to uh, talk about uh, wildfire smoke and how to protect yourself and your family from the harmful effects of wildfire smoke, especially if anyone in the family has asthma or lung disease. Um, we're also going to be talking about, uh, we'll have a cancer prevention table focusing on HPV vaccination. Um, HPV vaccination, when it's given between the ages of 11 and 12, can prevent 90% uh, of HPV-related cancers, which amounts to about 30,000 cases a year. Um, so that's another thing we'll be talking about. We'll also have the opportunity to sign up for Confluence Health's uh, electronic uh, portal, which is called MyChart. With my chart, uh, you can have the opportunity to look up your electronic medical record on your desktop, on your laptop, or on your phone. And with my chart, you can um, access your healthcare record. You can you can send a message to your healthcare team. You can view test results, um, and uh, you can make appointments. And that's so, another area where equity might be an issue. I have access yes. to my chart. Others may not for, right. for different circumstances. Right, and we want everyone to have access to be able to contact their healthcare team and to make appointments. And so it's really important that we want all of our patients to have this access. So this health fair is not just about health, it's also a fair. So Oscar, there's other uh, offerings at the Dia del Nino Health Fair. Can you tell us what people can expect when they show up? Yeah, there's gonna be different community booths. So we're gonna invite nonprofit uh, organizations to come also participate. But on top of information, we're gonna have a lot of fun kid games, a lot of fun kid activities. We'll have some you know, food, We'll have uh, various vendors, we'll have entertainment, uh, live entertainment on the stage. 
so it's going to be a great time to celebrate uh, and also you know come do the wellness check and so we're excited and we're excited to invite the community and uh, we expect a lot of folks here what can you tell me, Oscar, about Dia del Nino as a cultural festival outside yeah. of this particular health fair? Yeah, so the Dia del Nino dates back to 1925, uh, where, it's, where it began its celebration in Mexico, and now we see it in a lot of Latino communities or Latin communities, uh, you know, across the Americas. And so it's great to be able to bring that here to Wenatchee, and you know, especially here to Mahal Park, you know, where we're surrounded by a large uh, population of Latino families, and so. Um, you know, and with the health piece uh, in there, it's great to bring those resources to the to the community. Doctor, you said we're in our third year for the festival. Mm -hmm. Last year, you had all kinds of the same kinds of offerings that we're talking about, but with one exception, last year we were able to do vaccinations during the fair. This year, not so. This year, we won't have vaccinations just because of lack of availability, but we will still have the health screenings and lots of health information. What was your experience last year? Again, we said that this is uh, an Apple Blossom official event happening the same time as Youth Day, which is a very popular element of the Apple Blossom Festival. Yeah. Uh, did your attendance, uh, was it changed at all by that back last year? It really wasn't. We had uh, a great attendance, about 400 people here. Um, and uh, it was a, a very vibrant, uh, fun and festive event. Um, and so we are very excited to, to have community members here again. <laughs> There's a festival happening behind us, as, <laughs> yes. even as we speak. Thank you, Oscar. We've got to return this ball to the folks who need it. <laughs> Oscar, last uh, time you and I spoke, it had to do with the NCW uh, Equity Alliance, yep. where, you're in, where you're also still playing a part. You're with Parque Padrinos now, which is one of the driving forces behind why this park looks as great as it does. Yeah. So what's going on at Parque Padrinos right now? Yeah, Parque Padrinos, uh, you know, we're still here. Uh, so we're a local grassroots organization that helped uh, advocate for the renovation of the park. and. We continue to activate the park through events and activities. So, you know, we'll have Zumba in the evenings. Uh, you know, we have other events coming up throughout the year. And so I wear multiple hats in the community. And, you know, uh, one of the other hats I wear, uh, besides being the executive director for the NCW Equity Alliance, is being the president for Parque Padrinos. And so uh, we have a lot more to come and more events uh, in the summertime and in the, in the fall. So, you know, keep an eye out for some of, the, some of those events that are coming up. A lot of cultural celebrations that, that we have um, here at the park. And so we try to activate what we call activate the park um, and just try to make it so communities can come, people can uh, come and enjoy the park. Uh, it's such a beautiful, um, you know, renovation and that, that Parque Padrinos help uh, advocate for. And so we just try to use the park as much as possible, invite families. Um, you know, now we see it's a, it's a flourishing park. Uh, and so it's just great to be a part of this, this work and just, you know, continue just uh, providing resources and activities for the families to, you know, stay active. And so it's great. Have you heard people in the South Wenatchee community being excited for the health fair? Are they starting to see it as this is something that happens every year and we can't wait to do it? Yeah, we get questions about, hey, when's your next event? And it's, it's great to see as people are walking throughout the neighborhood, like, hey, there's an event. We're going to go check it out. And so everyone knows that they're welcome here and they just stop by, check it out. Um, you know, folks will participate in Zumba sometimes when they see it happening. So, um, yeah, folks know that you know, things are happening at the park and they just make themselves feel like they belong. And so it's great that Parque Padrinos uh, can offer that. And it's been such a unique um, collaboration with Confluence Health to be able to provide um, the health, uh, health fair here. So Yeah, we have a, a history of working with Parque Padrinos. Uh, we started working with Parque, Parque Padrinos in the pandemic um, with vaccine outreach. And Parque Padrinos and the Madrinas de Salud did an amazing job with vaccine outreach to all of North Central Washington. And one of the things we should point out about this health fair is the kind of services and screenings that you're offering. These are the kind of things that, you know, ordinarily you might have to go to your clinic, might have to pay for or get your insurance billed for. You're doing it all free. We are, yes. Mm -hmm. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. So anyone who uh, would like to be screened, we will do that for them. Very good. Well, Dr. Bindu Nayak with Confluence Health, Oscar Licon, Parque Padrinos, thanks for being here to talk with us about this. We're looking forward to the health fair on April 28th, a Sunday, 2 to 6 p.m., here in Kiwanis Metal Park. Thank you. Look forward to seeing y'all. You're watching the NCW Life Channel. Raising a family may have seemed overwhelming to your parents, but they weren't. Coach, teacher, life guide, caregiver. Family takes care of family. And as the circle of life continues, you now are their caregiver. 
It may seem overwhelming, but we're here to help you find the support services necessary so you can provide quality care to your elders. Call Aging and Adult Care of Central Washington at 1-800-572-4459. Welcome back to the program. Whatever you're doing April 27th, you are just canceled your plans. We have it all figured out for you. You're going to be down here at the Pipus Puppet Market inside the local tele event center. You're going to be here before 9 o'clock to avoid the lines or stand in line. You're going to get your plants, and then you're going to head up and watch the Teneplex Youth Parade. So Saturday is covered. To talk about the first part of it is this lovely young lady from the Chelan Douglas Master Gardeners. Introduce yourself, please. Uh, my name is Connie Mamel. And uh, I'm one of the two organizers of the Master Gardener plant sale, and we're really happy to be here again at Pibus Market um, on the last Saturday of April. It's always the last Saturday of April, Always right? the last Saturday of April, Is yes. it because it's okay to start putting stuff in the ground now? You, take, you check your soil temperature and it can go in? It's a little bit early to be putting okay. uh, those sensitive plants in the ground. You can put your kale and your broccoli and those, those kinds of plants, the cold weather plants, but the tomatoes, you want to be sure that it's not getting below 50 degrees at night for the tomatoes because when it gets below 50 degrees they stop growing and and if they have too many days when they just don't grow it's going to set them what back. about soil I temperature have, soil temperature it it should be about 50 degrees okay yeah. and it, that's mm -hmm. actually it takes a while for the soil to get up to 50 degrees it does yes mine's depending on where i put my thermometer some of some of my spots are there and some are not Tomatoes are going to be among the most popular plants, but they have a whole cornucopia of plants for you to choose from. Talk about the genesis of this plant sale. This is a big fundraiser for your foundation. It's the biggest fundraiser that we have. And how long has this been going on? The first plant sale was in 1998, so this will be our 26th year of having the Master Gardener plant sale. And it has, of course, evolved over time. Where are the plants right now? It's Monday as we tape this. They're in greenhouses or a greenhouse? Um, well, we are very grateful to the uh, Forest Service, the Forestry Sciences Lab here in Wenatchee. They have a good-sized greenhouse and they let us use it for the plant sale. Well, that's nice of them. Yeah. That's yeah. nice of them. Yeah, and it's you've a been, good comp And some of these plants have been, you, you planted these January, February to get them going? Mid-January, we did our first plants. Okay. And, um, and then the tomatoes, we started in early March. So we want them to be good-sized, but not too big. And, and I kind of caution people about that. You don't want your tomatoes to be too big because that, it always is a little bit of a shock for a plant to go from a pot into the ground. So um, you, you want them to be ready to take take on that shock and then start growing into the plants that you want. So we like them to be about so big. And it should be pointed them. out, not only are you gonna get some really cool plants, some decorative and others you can eat, but also the experts will be here to let you know how to get them going. We're here to answer questions. One of the things this uh, plant sale supports is the um, the plant diagnosis clinic. So you can you can come in or you can email us or call us on the phone and ask questions about what's going on in your garden and we will do our darndest to give you a good answer. As Bonnie Orr always tells us, you know, when you email Shalane Douglas Master Gardeners at gmail.com, I believe yep. is, is the address, you can attach a picture or two, say, hey, what's going on with my yard or how come this bush isn't doing anything? Right. And they can diagnose it right away. That's what they're, that's what they're here for. Herbs, peppers, gazillions of different uh, varieties of tomatoes, vegetables, you got a whole you got a cornucopia of stuff. You got a Noah's Ark full of vegetables and herbs here. We do. We uh, <clears throat> we try and give our customers what they want. And every year, um, let's see, it's the third Saturday in August. We have what we call the Tomato Gala, at the uh, at the community education garden, across the road from our greenhouse. And people can try out different kinds of tomatoes. They aren't all tomatoes from from us. Um, people people bring in tomatoes that they think others might like sure. and we have people vote on what's the best <laughs> tomato and we try and feature them in our plant sale last year the uh, the winners were a big red tomato called Paul Robeson and a cherry tomato called Sun Sugar and we have them plus a bunch of others how do you decide is it a committee that decides these are the plants that we're going to bring in this year this we know this is always going to sell so <clears throat> it's coming back year after year and we'll mix things up a little bit how's that decision made on, on what you're bringing down here on saturday 
Well, my, uh, my cohort Sandy and I um, have a lot to say about what we grow. And then other master gardeners will say, oh, this has always been my favorite. This is a great paste tomato, and I, I love to make marinara with this tomato. And, and then just our customers. First thing you need to know, now it starts at 9 o'clock, and again, it's going to be in the local Televent Center inside the Pipus Public Market, right inside from where we're sitting. That being said, you've mentioned this in years past, even though the doors open at 9, there'll be a line here well before 9. It, the first time I worked this plant sale, when I was a new master gardener, I was really surprised <laughs> at how long the line was by 8.30 in the morning. So, um, Are they afraid that the, the plant that they want is going to be gone? If they show up at like 11, is that, is that what I it is? I think so. We usually don't have more than about 30 or 40 of any one variety. And some people will come in and buy 10 of those and, and they might get the biggest ones or the healthiest looking ones. And you know, you want to get your first choice. So if you, I guess, you, yeah. you know, your best bet is to be here ready to go at nine o'clock. Yes. Uh, if, if you show up at noon, it runs from 9 to 2. If you show up at noon, what you're looking for, and it's an extensive list, I got it right here, it might not, not, not be here anymore. It might not. I always feel bad about that. Now, we did have a handful of eggplants left over from last year's sale that we gave to one of the community gardens, but wow. usually, usually there's not much left. There the are, the and I'm just going to spitball here, Looks like about a dozen different varieties of herbs, about a dozen different varieties of peppers, both hot and sweet. Probably 30 different uh, tomatoes. 28. 28. I think 28. And then yeah. vegetables, you got broccoli, cucumbers, eggplant, you already mentioned that, kale. Uh, you got, it's a, it's a huge variety of stuff. We do, we do. Yeah, and, uh, and we always take notes at the plant sale. So if you come to the plant sale and there's some variety that you don't see, let us know. We'll, we'll put it on the list for next year. There is a list right here. All I did is Google Shalan Douglas Master Gardener Plant Sale 2024, and there is a list that comes up of everything that's going to be up for grabs. This is a, this is a huge list. Advice would probably print this baby up and circle the ones you know you're going to want. That's what I would do. Yeah. Yes. And uh, I, I do remember one year we had a customer who was very disappointed that we had no Armenian cucumbers. And we've been growing Armenian cucumbers ever since. What's the difference between an Armenian cucumber and a regular cucumber? Oh, I'm glad you asked me that. Yes, an Armenian cucumber is actually a squash. Oh. But it looks like a cucumber, it tastes like a cucumber, and you can eat it just like a cucumber. And, um, and the skin has no bitterness and you don't need to peel it. Oh, yeah. I, I may have to check that out myself. Yeah. Um, They'll get awfully big. Do they? Yeah, you want to okay. be sure you harvest them before they get too big. Um, first things, okay, most important thing, how much do these things cost? Well, that's, that's kind of flexible. There's one overriding umbrella word, cheap. There is, you're going to get some good deals, all things considered. Well, we try to keep the prices in the same ranges as other places where you might go. And, and we price them uh, based on how they look. You know, if, if something, may, some of our plants grow better than others, and that's, that's as just, simple as that. That's how it goes. Yeah, the smaller ones will be a little less expensive than the larger ones. But if you know what you're doing, and even if you don't, again, you got the master gardeners here uh, to help you out. The, the one thing that all of these plants have in common is that they're going to they're going to do just fine as long as you do what you're supposed to be doing. Yes. You, yeah. you, you're not going to bring in plants that are going to die in a week. You just oh, don't. No. No. We've, uh, we've gone to some larger pots, uh, not, not larger around, but deeper, so that the roots can really grow down and we don't have that problem with roots getting bound up in the pot. So that's, that's one advantage that we've, we have. And you need to bring your own bag. That's very important. If, you, if you're planning on buying like a considerable amount of plants or just a couple, you got to get them back out to your car because bags are not going to be Well, we will here. have boxes. Boxes. Yeah. Yeah, and most people will get one of the boxes. We, um, Winco loans us carts. Oh, cool. So, so we will have carts that people can use to, to collect their plants. Native plants, is this something you've been doing for a while or is this something that's kind of new to the plant sale? Well, we have gotten um, about 110 plants from Derby Canyon natives and we'll be selling those at our plant sale as well. And we're pretty excited about that. That's something new. Derby Canyon does a great job. Of, of producing really our, our local native plants. 
And the nice us. thing about native plants, they're native plants, so you got to work really hard to kill them. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're, they're quite hardy and they're, they're native. They were here long before we were. Well, remember, if you're transplanting them, That's you right. still have to tend them for usually that first season. Yeah, yeah. Don't think that because it's drought resistant, it's drought proof. Yeah. And again, the experts will be here. You told me before we rolled tape that uh, you've had people who come down to the big plant sale the last Saturday in April, and they end up joining the Master Gardener program. Yes. Yes, we, we recruited two from last year's plant sale, and, and they'll be working at the plant sale this year. Who gets the, uh, what happens to the dough? I mean, you're, oh. this is all a fundraiser for right. you guys. So that supports um, a lot of the community things we do. It supports the diagnosis clinic, all the materials that we need for that. Um, it, we have a, a community education garden in Wenatchee. We have the Zurich Garden down here by the riverside. We have one in Kashmir at the county fair one in Leavenworth, the pollinator garden. So it supports all of that work that the master gardeners do. Are a lot of these uh, plants that we talked about, are they up at the demonstration garden uh, at Springwater and Western? They can take a look at it? Yes, yes some of them will be oh, up wow, there. Oh, wow, Yes, a yeah. In fact, uh, the, the people who, the gardeners who manage the CEG, the community education garden, they always come to us when the plant sale is going on and say, you know, we need a few of these in the vegetable garden up there. And, yeah, so we make that trade. I love that, Eric, because it's all it's all there in that yep. in that nice little two-acre plot. If it if it can grow in the Wenatchee Valley, it's there in one form or the other. I've learned a lot yeah. from the vegetable irrigation garden systems. Mm -hmm. It's all there. It's it's really it's absolutely outstanding. And we have a last Saturday training up there, all all during the season. You can come up there for for whatever training that we're doing. Connie, is, do we did we get everything down again? It's this Saturday. It starts at nine. It runs till two. They'll be out of plants by one. I'm not lying to you because that's what's going to happen. You want if there's particular plants that you want or some of the hotter items like the tomatoes and stuff. You you want to be here at nine at the latest, or you might be out of luck. Did we get everything else touched on? I I think we got the high points. Good. I, I'm, we're looking forward to seeing you. One of the things I always when I recruit for volunteers, about 70 master gardener volunteers total who do this. And uh, I always tell them this is a great opportunity to meet people and interact with the community. So it's and, not, yeah. And well, it's Pipe is Public Market. It's where our community is meeting. I can guarantee yeah. you, you'll have people going to come down here to have breakfast at the at the Huck and go, what's going on here? And before you know it, they're walking home with a, with a bunch of plants. Yes. That's what we want to see. Thanks for Indeed. spending some time out with me. Oh, I well, thank it. you very much. And let yeah. us know how it goes. Uh, you I, bet I, I will. I, I want to do a follow up. Okay. You're watching Wake Up in Anchee Valley. We'll be right back. Hi folks, welcome to Save Mart. How can we help you today? Uh, we're looking for a recliner. Okay, right this way. We'll go ahead and move this chase on the other side. Great, I want that one. I would like that one. That's a great choice. And I want this one as well. Okay. And I definitely want this one. Ooh. you find it at Save Mart. Full service at a low, low price. There's no place like home. Because home is where we're totally comfortable. It's where we can be ourselves and let our guards down. It's where we make memories. And we're always imagining new ways to keep it totally comfortable. Carrier, total comfort, totally happy. Turn to the experts, Carrier and Alpine Air. Heat and air, call Alpine Air. All right, 48 degrees, so we haven't really moved much on the temperature scale since this show began. Before we do the forecast, real quickly, one more programming reminder. If you can't make it out to the parade route tomorrow, we will have the Teneplex Youth Parade tomorrow at 11 a.m. The parade itself begins at 11 a.m., a traditional start up there at Triangle by Historic Recreation Park, and it'll be coming down uh, by our broadcast location, which is right across Rondo Avenue from the Chelan County Courthouse. will be coming by right by our location about 15 minutes later, give or take a couple. So there you go. Eric Granstrom and Julie Agents Kuntz, the 1974 Apple Blossom Queen, will provide your coverage. We'll have it for you in high-definition television 
and monophonic sound tomorrow at 11 a.m. What's Mother Nature have in store for us tomorrow? Well, let's get through today first. Partly cloudy today. Can't rule out a raindrop this afternoon. It may happen. I think we'll be dry. We'll top off at 63. That's pretty cool. We only had 53 yesterday. That is below normal. So for Saturday, partly sunny, about 62. When the parade starts at 11 a.m., it'll be in the 50s, it'll be about 54 or 55 degrees. So you want to be uh, you want to dress accordingly there because it will be a little cool when the parade starts. 42 for the overnight low on Saturday, Sunday for the Pepsi Cola Youth Day at the park. Cooler still, little bit of a wind, but quite a bit of sunshine at a high of 64. We'll see below normal temperatures into the early part of next week. That's it for us. We'll see you Monday. Bye bye. Welcome to Network TV, episode 10 of season 11 here on the NCW Live channel. I'm David Maybe, the marketing director at NCW Tech Alliance. Delighted to be your host today. At NCW Tech Alliance, we're dedicated to the integrating technology with the community spirit, fostering innovation and cultivating the next wave of STEM leaders in North Central Washington. Our efforts are focused on creating a fertile ground for growth, learning and innovation, ensuring our region is a beacon of technological advancement and educational excellence. In this episode, we're excited to feature two remarkable individuals who are driving significant change and innovation within our community. First, we have Sarah Brown, a dynamic leader in economic development and nonprofit sectors with a compelling history of advocacy, resilience, and systematic problem solving. From initiating her first nonprofit at 15 to navigating the challenges of being a female farmer in rural.